Hey everyone, my name is Jack and I want to go over the very powerful real estate strategy that is using cash out refinances. Using a cash out refinance is a great way for real estate investors to keep their capital moving, to keep building their portfolio over time, and it's a very tax efficient strategy for doing that. However, it is not without drawbacks and we'll go through those in this video. The cash out refinance strategy is often called the Burr method. That is, you buy the property, you rehab it, you rent it out, you then refinance the loan, and then ideally you repeat it, uh, hence the acronym. Wow. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say you want to buy a $100,000 property. It needs a lot of rehab in order to be rent ready. So there's not a lot of buyers who are willing to do that rehab, and certainly there are not a lot of lenders that are willing to lend on that property since it currently isn't inhabitable. Let's say there's a leaky roof, it needs plumbing work, um, among a host of other issues. Now to buy this property, what a lot of real estate investors will do is they'll either use their own cash to buy it, or they'll go and try to find other people's money besides more traditional banks. This means they'll look to private money, maybe relatives or friends who have a lot of money or are willing to loan it out to them to buy that initial property. Others use hard money lenders. These are typically higher interest loans with very short terms with the goal to eventually refinance out of them. But in the meantime, they allow you to buy a property without using your own cash up front. Oftentimes, private money loans and hard money loans will allow you to factor in rehab costs into the loan as well. So sometimes you don't have to put any of your cash up front outside of some of the loan fees at the beginning. Whatever method you use to buy the property, you're still going to need to put about $50,000 in rehab, let's say. Maybe you get that through private money as well, or maybe you have that cash ready to go. Now this $50,000 that you put into the property is a cost efficient rehab. It's not just throwing money wherever you see fit, it's only putting it towards the things that will drive the value of the property up and ideally drive the rents up as well. You don't want to be wasting money on things like golden toilets, for example, since that's not really going to translate to anything over the long haul, not to mention it's just stupid. After you finish your cost-efficient, effective rehab, Let's say the property now appraises for $200,000. Ideally, you want to double your money on a rehab if possible uh, when you're making it a cost-effective one and not just some sort of luxury turnaround. And now that the property is inhabitable and fully rehabbed, you can go ahead and rent it out in the meantime to start bringing in some income to offset maybe the initial mortgage that you have or maybe even start bringing in some cash flow in the meantime. Now the next step is where the magic happens. You're going to take that fully rehabbed $200,000 property and show it to a bank. Banks are going to be way more willing to lend on a fully rehabbed and even rented property because it doesn't need all those repairs. You've already done it. It's a much safer asset for them to use as collateral. Because of this, you're going to be able to do what's called a cash out refinance. Since the property is worth $200,000, most conventional lenders are going to be able to lend up to 80% of the value of the property, which in this case would be $160,000. Now let's say you do take out the full $160,000, the full 80% of the $200,000 property. Basically the bank cuts you a check for $160,000 and uses the property as collateral and gets a mortgage on it, just like any other loan, only you can use that money for whatever you want now. What you'll probably do, and probably should do, is take that money to repay your initial investor or your initial lender to give them all of their money back and pay them off. In our case, the first loan was $100,000. Now they're paid off and they're out of the picture for now. You also had the $50,000 in rehab costs, which maybe came out of your own pocket, maybe someone else's. You also get to repay yourself there. And the best part, at least in our example, you still have an extra $10,000 left over, which you can use to do whatever else you want to do with it. You can invest it in another property. You can use it to buy some car or other frivolous item. Just remember that you do eventually have to pay back that mortgage, but the cash is yours. There's nothing tied to it. You can do whatever you want with it from there. Ideally, you'll take that $10,000 and reinvest it elsewhere. Maybe you want to diversify your portfolio and put it in a stock index fund. After all, if you can finance something for 3, 4, 5, even 6% annually, the stock market returns 7% on average. So over 30 years, you'd probably expect to come out on top if you just invested that money elsewhere. But now that you have all of your money back 
and you've paid off your initial creditors and have nice long-term financing and a tenant paying down that mortgage and ideally cash flowing as well, you're all set to go ahead and repeat the process all over again. Wow. That's what makes the cash out refinance model so powerful and that you can keep your money moving in the otherwise capital intensive and rather slow moving industry that is real estate. Really the cash out refinance model is a lot like the buy and hold version of flipping. Only instead of selling the property, you're taking out the money via a loan that you will eventually have to pay back, but you get to use that money in the meantime and don't have the tax implications that come with selling a property. Because when you sell a property with a flip, you have to pay taxes on the gain, usually at your normal income tax rate, which will be way higher than just about any other tax rate. So it's way more tax efficient if you can take out that money via loan and then invest it and compound it in other investments. Now, of course, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the cash out refinance method is not without risks. Whenever you take out debt, you are inherently increasing the amount of risk you're taking. If something goes wrong, that debt doesn't go away. You have to pay it down. And if you can't pay it down, you're gonna lose your property to foreclosure or potentially lead to bankruptcy. That's why it's imperative to always have at least a few months reserved so that you can meet those monthly mortgage payments even if your property is vacant or if something goes wrong and where you're not getting the income that you need to, to back up those loans. And at the same time with the cash out refinance, you usually have to wait six months after buying the property in order to get a cash out refinance in the first place. Banks call this the seasoning period of the property and that you've owned it for six months without issue and then they'll say it's okay to get a mortgage on it via cash out refinance. This can mess with timing a bit if you have a short term hard money loan and can add up an interest cost, so it's something to keep in mind as well. Furthermore, there's always room for error when you're doing a major rehab. Things can go out of control pretty quickly with expenses, so you have to be very careful and hire experienced contractors, ideally ones you've worked with before, or at least that have good recommendations to avoid this problem. A bad rehab or an overly expensive rehab can ruin this strategy because when you go to get the cash or refinance, you're not gonna have enough money to pay off your existing debts if you used hard money or other people's money. But regardless of these drawbacks, the cash out refinance method is a very powerful strategy that every investor should at least have in their tool belt, since it can be a way to multiply your returns and keep your money moving in real estate. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. It helps the channel out a lot. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them below. Until next time, take care.